Morning, everybody. Chris here. Welcome back to 30 Day Excel Analyst. This is day eight, and this is the last day in data management week. So today we're covering Excel formulae. We've experienced uh, the power of Power Query and other things in Excel yesterday. We talked about how to do data validation, why it's important, the different options in Excel for cell validation, how to set up a spreadsheet for data input. And today we're staying in the spreadsheet. We're going to look at doing data cleansing activities in a lean and mean way using just Excel formally. I've got 10 Excel formally that are going to speed up your data cleansing in Excel. And the truth is, I love VBA, I love Power Query, but the majority of data cleansing tasks I do in Excel, which I'm doing all the time, I'm sure you're doing them very frequently too, I just use Excel formally to do those. So if you're watching live, um, I won't go into the comments for the first 10 or 15 minutes, but do leave me uh, a comment in the chat. I'll get back to you there towards the end of the session. And if you're watching on replay, thank you for joining us to leave me a comment below. I'm very happy to discuss any aspects of the program there. So with that said, let's get into today's session. So it's day eight, 30 day Excel analyst, where we're aiming to transform your analytical skill set uh, in 30 days. It's been data management week. So we've covered most of what we've got on this slide. Yesterday, we dealt with data input into the spreadsheet, cell validation, other useful stuff, data import. We looked at uh, setting up an online uh, survey questionnaire via Google Forms, getting that data into Excel. Um, we've explored Power Query pretty extensively uh, this week. But this area, this area here is what we're covering today. So formulate. And as I said, I do most of my um, data cleansing, actually just using formally in the spreadsheet, not using Power Query or VBA. So what kind of stuff am I using? Well, I've picked out the 10 most important formulae for data cleansing in Excel, the top 10 formulae for data cleansing in Excel. If you like, we've got trim and clean, find and substitute, len, good old len, right, left, mid, unique, and count if. The count if formula is probably my most used formula in Excel used for data analysis as well. We're going to see it time and again in a 30-day Excel analyst. So Power Query and VBA offer more power and flexibility, but using formally means no data connections. So no irritating uh, notification when you open the file saying there's a data connection, and then no worries about VBA code, the, the file carrying code and being able to use VBA, um, allowing VBA in the file. We don't have to necessarily do that to do data cleansing with formulae. We can keep it super lean and mean. So our task today, it's an extension of our task yesterday, the doc survey. And as always, guys, the resources are available for download. These slides are available in PDF if you can't see them too well. Uh, and we've got today's download file. The link is in the video description below. Also in the video description, links to useful videos uh, for follow-ups to this session. So check out the video description for that. Anyway. Uh, the second part of the dog survey uh, exercise says so the email from our customer. Thank you so much for your hard work today. The data looks great. And even I can understand it. Fantastic stuff. We do have a few problems, though. Could you take a look? Bit of a leading question, isn't it? Could you take a look? How long is this going to take? We added an index number before each entry. Is that right? If not, please fix it. So sounds a bit contrived, doesn't it? But believe me, I've seen many stranger things happen in Excel on real world projects. We'll look in just a second at what they're talking about there. Some dogs might have spaces after their names. Very common thing in Excel data is to have unwanted spaces after or indeed before names. So how can we deal with that? Some dogs might have more than one entry. So duplicate entries, uh, could you investigate that? So how can we sort that out in the spreadsheet using Excel formally? Luna's name is actually Luma. Could you change that? I should have mentioned yesterday, Luna is my uh, long-suffering flat coat retriever. She's right beside me. She's outside today because it's a bit hot, but she listens to all of my YouTube content. Can you imagine? Uh, here she is, and I've just found out her name is, is actually Luma. Uh, so there you go. So you want to change one of the entries what are the options for doing that uh, in the spreadsheet? So uh, let's get into the Excel file. <clears throat> and let's start de dealing with these queries. So we noted first, we've got this somewhat bizarre thing that they've done, but bizarre things happen, guys, uh, in spreadsheets and on real world projects. Don't make any assumptions. Uh, so they've gone ahead uh, and they've put a number. They've put a number before the entry. So how are we going to fix this using Excel formally? We don't want the number. We just want the name. So 
let's get into our top 10 Excel formula for data cleansing. I'm just going to um, hide these columns, Alt H O U C, uh, on the Windows PC. So, what do we want here? Um, firstly, what's our logic going to be here? Well, I can see, luckily, as far as I can see anyway, each of these have a space, although there's a, there's a particular problem. There seems to be two spaces here. Each of these have a space between the full stop or the period and the actual name. So using the logic, where is the space? Where is the space in this entry? That would be a good way to get it get it started. It's all get us started. It's all about numbers. Each of these characters in the cell has a number from one to the number of characters. We can manipulate those numbers to get just the text we need. So, what's the text we want to find? Well, our logic is we want to find the space and the space within text. So, it's the space within this cell, and then that's fine. Anything in the square brackets is optional in an Excel formula. Uh, we don't need that. So it's returned a value of three. Just double click to take that down. And I can see three. Well, that's the position of the space character in the cell. So it seems to make sense. That space is one, two, three characters into that text entry. OK. Now we know where the space is. We can use we can use the right formula to get just the chunk of text to the right of the text. This is what we're going to try to do. But to make it a bit easier, let's take an intermediary step here and let's use len, good old len. Now, len is going to give us the number of characters. Len's going to give us the number of characters in a text entry. So once again. We can take that formula down. This is just counting the number of characters. These numbers are all important because we're using the numbers to extract the text that we that we actually want. So we've got find. We've got good, good old len. And then this is going to be the, the right portion of the text. Hmm. Something like that. And holding down the shift key, alt H W just to wrap the text there. So the right portion of the text, what do we mean? Well, this is the number of characters on the right-hand side that we want to extract. So we're just working through the logic here. And yeah, this is what I like. And, you know, I'm not a fan of long Excel formally. What I like is multiple columns with short Excel formally makes everything easier to understand and Excel processes everything more efficiently that way. Okay, so we should be able to use the right formula now, hopefully, to get what we need. So with right, we've got to give Excel some text and we, then we can say the number of characters on the right hand side of that text entry that we want to return. So we can select our cell and then because of the preliminary work, the intermediary steps that we've taken, hopefully this is going to work. And this is just, just going to get us the, um, the text that we want. There seems to be okay now. There seems to be a problem with number two. We're going to deal with that in a second. And indeed, number three, we're going to de deal with that in a second too. But this seems to be okay. Now, to confirm this, it's difficult to tell, are there any spaces before or after these entries? So to, to confirm this, a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to convert to values. So Control, Shift, and down on the Windows PC, Control, C, Control, Alt, V, V, allows me to convert to values. And now I can just navigate. Up and down this formula. Now, I know from my preparation that the first three are a bit quirky. The first three have problems. We're going to deal with those separately. But if I go further down the text, just hitting the F2 key, and I can confirm there's no unwanted spaces at the beginning or at the end. So that little modeling exercise we've undertaken there, that little data cleansing exercise, that seems to have worked. So I can now go Control Shift and down again, Control C, and I can copy, paste, special the values here. Copy, paste, special, the values, control, shift down, control, alt, V, and V. Copy, paste, special, the values in. And we've managed to get rid of those unwanted index numbers. Seems to be okay. And you can see there's absolute carnage over on our formula over this side now. Although these formulae are still referring to the same cells. And now clearly they're not working because it's looking for a space, for example, and, and there aren't any spaces in there. But those formally have done the job. We've got our values in, so we can go ahead now and just clear these out. I'm just going to hit the uh, delete key here. Okay, so job one should be done. We've managed to get rid of that index number. So you could do that with Power Query, of course. And remember, Excel Metaskill, you should be a critical consumer. Yeah, 
don't take it as read that this is the best way to do it. What do you think? Try it with Power Query as well. Remember with Power Query, we've got the idea of a delimiter. So we can use a delimiter. You could use that space and use that space to just extract the text to the right of the space. That's possible with Power Query. You can look at two sessions ago. Which one suits you better? Each has pros and cons. Try to develop that critical consumption of what you're learning around Excel. Okay, some dogs might have spaces after their names. Sorry, happens all the time, doesn't it? You might remember, yes, yesterday we had data validation on these cells, but I'm gonna suppose that it's a free text entry. Happens all the time, doesn't it, in data input? People have cells where they can do free text entry, for example, somebody's name or the name of the dog. Okay, so very simply, this idea of just hitting the F2 key. So I'm just going down the cells, hitting the F2 key. As I said, obviously I've prepared this data, I know the first three cells are problematic. It could be the cells all the way through the data set. You, you'll just have to extend the techniques down to find that. So it looks suspicious, doesn't it? I'm just hitting the F2 key. Looks suspicious. This cell has a space at the end. This cell has a space at the beginning. What on earth is going on in this cell? Well, this cell, what's happened is somebody has gone in and done Alt and Enter, Alt and Enter, that allows you to continue the text on the next line. Now, that might seem a bit innocuous. This innocuous, this caused absolute chaos, absolute chaos on a development project we're doing at the moment. We were trying to save uh, to PDF an entry with that new line character in. It took me ages to work it out, but I did work it out using these techniques we're going to go through now. So unwanted spaces. What are our options here? And remember, I've laid them out. Our 10 Excel formally for doing um, data cleansing. Yeah, so have a look at trim and clean. Trim is going to deal with spaces, and then clean is going to deal with unwanted characters, including that new line character that I just created. So trim. Let's go to trim, and let's just let's just deal with these three entries to begin with. So Control D on the Windows PC is pulling that formula down. Now we're going to use len, and len's going to allow us to understand how many characters in the cell, and that means we can understand are there unwanted spaces in the cell. So copper, one, two, three, four, five, six letters. So that seems to be okay. And I'm going to go control D here, and I can see Bubba is now five characters. And we can see from how that text is displaying, we've got rid of that leading space. And then Cody, well, Cody's five characters, it should be four characters, shouldn't it? C-O-D-Y, so there still seems to be a problem there. But you can see trim, dead easy with trim, gets rid of those leading spaces, gets rid of those uh, spaces at the end as well. Super useful stuff. But it doesn't deal with a situation where we've got this new line. And that's it's somewhat, somewhat un, unusual, but it's just one to be aware of because it can cost you hours. It can cost you time and money. That's what we've been experiencing uh, in the past few weeks on this project. So what, what's another option using the clean formula? Now, the clean formula, the technical definition is it's going to get rid of unprincipled characters, unprincipled characters. And this new line character is one of those un, unprincipled characters. So the clean formula, incredibly useful uh, for this kind of data cleansing. You can see Cody with the LEM formula now. Cody now has only four um four characters. And if I copy these in, so these are the cleansed entries, going to copy them back into our data set here, control C, control V, V, just to take the values in. And we can see now data display much better. We can do the quick manual test with F2. I can see no unwanted spaces. So this is how to use trim and clean to get rid of unwanted spaces and unprincipled characters. I'm using these all the time. This is how I do my data cleansing, guys. It might feel a bit manual, but I just love how lean and mean it is. To me, it's preferable to setting up a Power Query connection. It's preferable to using the VBA editor, of course, although um, Jorgen and others will know that VBA is very, very close to my heart, definitely. Right. What else we've got to do for our customer here? So some dogs, some dogs might have more than one entry. Could you investigate? So here we're dealing with something very common uh, in Excel data sets, which is duplicate entries here. Now, we do have some options. We have some native options in Excel. Uh, we have an option here to remove duplicates. So you might want to look at that, select all the text and remove duplicates. That's, that's possible. Now, 
XL365, I did see in the chat, I think it, I think it was Heavy Downpour was saying um, you don't have XL365. Okay. So if you don't have XL365, you mentioned a VBA-based user-defined function, or you've got what I just pointed out, which is the remove duplicates function that's, that's native to Excel. Now, Unique. Unique is a dynamic array formula. We're going to talk about those briefly uh, before the end. But Unique is going to allow us to select a data set only available, available in XL365, select a data set, and then it's going to take the unique entries and put them into what's called a dynamic array, a dynamic array. We're going to talk a little bit more about dynamic arrays before the end of the session. There's a video in the video description below from, from a few months ago where I talk about the pros and cons of dynamic arrays, some very interesting pros, and a few cons that probably aren't uh, spoken about enough. So what we can see straight away is just comparing where these two data sets end. These are the unique values, and this is the actual data set. Well, the unique values end in row 189. The actual data set ends in row 204. So the unique values are not as, uh, there's not as many unique values as in the data set. So what does that say to us? There must be some duplicated entries. My way of dealing with this is with the unique list, I recommend you go control shift down, control C, control alt V, V. That's going to convert it to values. That's going to get rid of any dynamic behavior. We don't want it in this instance. So we've now got a guaranteed list of unique values here. Now what I'd recommend is using countif, super useful data analysis formula in Excel. Countif will allow us to count how many times in a data set does a particular entry appear. Well, we've already got the unique list of values. So we should be able to account for all the values in the data set now. So count if requires a range and a criteria. Excel is saying, what, what cells do you want me to look at? And then the criteria is, what cells do you want me to pick out? So the range, I'm going to go across to column D, control shift down on the Windows PC. Now remember, we've got to hit the F4 key. We're going to talk more about the different ways of referencing informally in Excel modeling week. But for now, hit the F4 key, make sure you've got one, two, three, four dollar signs in there. So that's the range we want Excel to look at. And we want Excel, the criteria, we want Excel to count the cells where copper appears here. I'm just going to put on the grid lines here to improve readability for you. Alt WVG uh, on the Windows PC here. OK, so this is the dog name. This is the number of times they appear uh, in the data set. So we can see straight away, uh, we've got a few appearing more than once. I think Luna appears in the data set uh, four times, wherever, wherever Luna's gone. Anyway, so, so once again, I'd recommend, now we've got the count if formula working, convert to values again, control C, control alt V, V. And you can sort this data set, alt A, S, S. Uh, sort by number of times. Let's go largest to smallest. That's a quick way. And that's a fairly quick way, anyway, for us to understand the number of times each of this entry, each of these entries, is appearing in the data set. Now we can validate this by just going Control Shift down and adding up. I can see it says some two hundred at the bottom here. Adding up the um, adding up all of those count if formally that should equal two hundred, shouldn't, shouldn't it? Because all of the rows will be accounted for then. So that seems to work well. So that's a quick way to understand how how many times entries appear in a data set. What else might might you want to do here? Um, well, just simple sorting here, guys. You know, I don't recommend sorting too much. I don't recommend filtering an awful lot. But we can sort the data here. So I've just selected the data. And then we can say sort by name, uh, A to Z. And this this will allow us fairly easy by easy. easy fairly fairly easily by going down the data set, we'll be able to see where our multiple entries are. And of course, if I had retained those count if formally, uh, it, it, it would flag it up to us uh, straight away. Just quickly on keyboard shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts is a big part of data management because if you're manipulating data, you need to be able to select it quickly. What are the main keyboard shortcuts? Control shift right, control shift down, allows me to select a data set like that. Control and down arrow takes me to the bottom of the, of the data set. Control and right takes me to the right of the data set. And then switching sheets as well. So control and page down. And on my keyboard, I have to hold down the function key too. That allows me to switch sheets. 
And then Alt and Tab allows me to switch uh, between files. In this case, I'm just switching to a PowerPoint presentation. You could switch, just be switching to an Excel file. This is a big part of data management. I see so many people clicking and holding and struggling to actually um, move data around with keyboard shortcuts, including between moving between sheets and files. It's so much easier, guys. So take the time to learn those keyboard shortcuts. Also available in Mac, of course. Just do a quick internet search. You'll be able to uh, find those. Very good. So we've solved three of our problems with, with Founder Dogs with more than one entry. Luna's name is actually Luma. So we're changing Luna's name for the purposes of this exercise. Could you change that? Interesting. Okay, so 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 what would be the option? Say, well, the most obvious option is to do a find and replace here. So say we want to find Luna, and then we want to replace. Uh, we could just go Luma here. That would work absolutely fine. I use find and replace very frequently, and in the VBA editor too, uh, I'm using the find function there too. If you wanted to do this in a more, uh, how would you say? If if you didn't want to use the find and replace box. Uh, what would the options be? Well, the, the substitute formula is worth knowing. There's also a replace formula, which does a similar thing. Uh, so the text is going to be, we're looking through this text. We want to replace the N with an M for Mike here. And there we go. That should do the job. So you can see this allows us to quickly convert. Yeah, in, in this case, we just want to replace a letter. So that's the final formula I think you need to know for doing data cleansing uh, in an Excel spreadsheet. Now, we've covered all these trim and clean for getting rid of those spaces, getting getting rid of those uh, unprintable characters, particularly that new line character. That's a real stealthy, nasty little one. Took us ages to work that out. Find and substitute. We've just covered find um, allows us to, to, to locate a character in the text, returns a number, the position of that character. Substitute allows us to change a character substitute another one in. Uh, Len gives us the length of a uh, of a text entry. So we're doing a lot of this numerically using the numerical position of a character. So having uh, a number to represent all of the text, the number of characters in the text, that's important. We saw how to use right, left. Mid is an option too we haven't touched on. So right and left gets you text from the right or left of the text entry. Mid allows you to get the middle portion. A middle portion of the text could be useful too. We've looked at unique uh, instantly removes duplicates, Excel 365 only. You have a remove duplicates function anyway in Excel. Also, Power Query and VBA could be used for doing that kind of thing. Count if as well. So count the number of times an entry appears in a data set. So these are the 10 formally I think you need uh, for data cleansing in Excel. So this... This is it, guys. So what do you think? Now we've got to get into critical thinking mode. What are you going to use? Did you like Power Query best? Did you like those formally? Personally, I love the lean and mean approach of just, just doing it formulaically, not doing any, any data connections or anything. Or maybe VBA. Maybe VBA works well for you. I can do all three approaches. I apply the one that's most appropriate in the situation I'm in. Good. So finally, let's talk about data management. So our final topic in uh, data management, we, let, let's talk about capacity management rather, capacity management more specifically. So what are we going to do when the size of the data set changes? Hmm. I was just uh, discussing, for example, if we wanted to remove those duplicate entries. So Charlie's got two entries here. So I might want to go Alt-H-D-R and delete a row there. That's just an example of how a data set might change. At the same time, we might want to put additional data at the bottom of the data set. So our, our approach should be dynamic. It should be dynamic. It should account for changing data set sizes. Now, this is possible with ranges. If you want to use ranges, then you would have to provide additional capacity, provide additional capacity. So I've just copied the bottom row there. Uh, Control-Alt-V-T brings the formats down. Control-Alt-V-F. Uh, brings the formally down, although we don't have any formally there. I think I just, yeah, you know, I just brought the values down, I think. But if you want to use ranges and allow additional capacity, you will need an approach to allow additional capacity. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to pre-format some cells and um, alt H O U unhide the columns here, L, and then you're going to have to, and you can see a column with a problem with using ranges there. I didn't account for the hidden columns. You're going to have to copy the formulae down to, so Control-C, uh, Control-Alt-V, and F. 
Now you've got a situation, I control of VT for the formats as well. Now you've got a situation where you've got a range that has formally in, and those formally could easily be deleted here. Mm. So what would you want? You might want some more, some clearer Excel formatting so people know that, know that we've got formally there. But what are some of the other approaches available to us in terms of uh, capacity management? One that I would recommend, the simplest one, is to format as a table. Mm. So we can just click on the uh, data there, and you can choose whatever uh, formatting you know style you want. Now, this data is now formatted as a table. Now, there's a few downsides with tables. Firstly, the formats, they're not to everybody's liking, and yeah, you lose a bit of control uh, of the appearance. You also have another object in the file. Now, uh, you have another object in the file. If we go to the name manager, just go to form formulas and name, we now have another object in the file here. We have a table in the file. So it goes a bit against my principle of leanness and meanness. That's why I often use ranges rather than tables. But what approach would I generally recommend? I generally recommend using uh, tables to do this. That's because tables they will automatically expand and they're easy for you to expand as well. So you can see I have this little drag handle. I'm able to expand the table in that way. And you can see the formulae are automatically dragged, out, dragged down. I think you can even add an entry at, at the bottom of the table, say around here, and those formulae would automatically drag down. So the easiest way to do capacity management is probably using um, tables there. Mm. So how are you going to approach capacity? capacity management. Tables is the easiest way. If you can handle uh, the funky formulae as well, we have to have diff different notation for a table. So I'll just show you what the notation might look like. So if we want to sum formula here and we want to sum up the time, time off lead, you can see, um, yeah, we're going to have very different notation there. So you're going to have to get used to some new notation. You will get used to that. That's one of the reasons I find, ta find tables irritating. I tend to steer away from them, but I'm more, more of an advanced user, I suppose. So I understand the pros and the cons of this. There's a video in the video description below if you want to learn about my approach, which is why called Why I Don't Use Excel Tables. That's a bit of a clickbait title. In reality, I do use Excel tables. Um, as always, I'm a critical consumer, critical practitioner, and I choose the best tool for the job. Finally, dynamic arrays. So, so we touched on the unique formula quickly which gives us a dynamic array. Let's look at another uh, dynamic array formula quickly, just so you understand a little bit about what's possible. So this is also only available in Excel 365, but the filter formula gives you the power of a filter, and you can see I've got the filters on the data here, gives you the power of the filter in a formula. So what we have to do is select all the data, then we have this include criteria, and in the include criteria, we have to select a column and then select the um, value by which we want to filter this column. And, and this is the notation you need. So this is the range or the column, and this is the value you want to pull out, and this is the whole data set. So this is the filter formula. I uh, haven't quite got this right. That's because my ranges don't line up. So you can see the rows. I didn't quite line up there, so I had C5 and C4. We've got to make sure those rows line up. If you can do that, you can then access uh, a dynamic array formula. So this is pretty cool, I've got to say. So this is dynamic in the sense that if you add data to the data set, this formula is going to automatically update. Pretty cool. Hmm. So dynamic arrays in the video description below, we've got our dedicated video to dynamic arrays. I talk about the formula that I think are good, the formula that I think are not so good, and how they might fit into your Excel practice, only available in Excel 365. And this is the final aspect that we need to be aware of, dynamic arrays in Excel when we're talking about data management. So with that said, guys, uh, that concludes uh, data management week. Here is the main stuff that we've learned. Data management generally is a huge part of Excel practice. Guys, if you can get this down, if you can understand the kind of problems you're going to have to deal with, and if you can have a toolkit, you don't need all of it, but you do need some tools to deal with this. You know, you could get most through most of this just with Power Query. You could get through a lot of this just using Excel formally. So you don't need all of this, but you do need to be aware of the kind of problems that people are dealing with. And you do have to have tools, broadly speaking, to deal with those problems. 
So that's it for today's session, guys. So uh, if you're watching on replay, make sure you leave, you leave me a comment below. Very happy to discuss anything with you. I'm going to get into the comments now, guys. So if you've got any um, questions, pop them in the comments now. I will deal with them before the end of the session. So big uh, welcome to Jorgen. Uh, heavy downpour as well. How are you doing? Now, heavy downpour, yeah, uh, was writing something about, yeah, I'm still using Office 2016. And you'll find with organizations, there's still plenty of organizations who aren't using Excel 365. In my experience, just anecdotally, I think most organizations are still not using Excel 365. This is four years after Excel 365 came out, after the Dynamic Array formula came out. We've got to be aware of that as Excel analysts. It's not just a case of what tools do I want to use. It's certainly not a case of I want to show off the latest tool that I've learned. That's not the approach. The approach should be you've got a range of tools to call on. You appreciate the pros and cons of each. You can apply the one most appropriate for the situation. It might be that we can't apply dynamic array formally. So what would the alternatives be? And here, yeah, Heavy Downpour is talking about all about that UDF life, UDF uh, um, standing, I believe, for user-defined function. So in Excel VBA, you can uh, create your own functions, your own bespoke functions. We're not going to go into that on this program, but we are going to touch on automation with VBA. Hopefully I can light a fire within you and then you can go and learn VBA yourself. We've got links to our best VBA beginner videos in the video description below. Uh, Arnie tuning in as well. The Blue Mountain sounds very scenic, Arnie. So you'll have to share a picture uh, somehow for us one day. So how are you doing? One day, how are you doing, Karen? Good to see you. How are you doing, Dave? Uh, up in Brad Bradford, Bradford. Very strange summer, Dave. I believe it was very hot to begin with. Um, I agree. Why don't I slow down and speak English? I agree. It's been a strange summer, very hot to begin with, quite cool and mild in the middle. And then what's going to happen at the end now? We're going to see. Roger, how are you doing? Uh, Roger's having the car service. So what better way to pass a bit of time than a bit of live content with Tiger? Thanks for being with us, uh, Roger, as always. Samuel tuning in. But I think it might have been two or three minutes late. I just like to let people get in, you know, let, let the tension build a bit. How you doing, Bert? Good to have you with us. Uh, Marcus says, really enjoying these sessions, some content as a refresher and others are new, new for me. Fantastic. Yeah, I think most people watching these sessions will have some experience in Excel. So it's not really about learning Excel from new. It's about, you know, rounding out that skill set and moving from being somebody who can do a few things in Excel to somebody who's a serious Excel analyst whose skills can have a real uh, impact in the real world. That's that's what we're going for, Marcus. Uh, anyway, yeah, Dave said uh, wouldn't proper be included in the list of um, uh, data cleansing formally. Possibly, this this list isn't is is isn't exhaustive. Um, so the proper formula would put proper capitalization. Uh, so big letters and small letters uh, on a text entry. You've also got the upper formula, the lower formula. So there are more formally. I've, deal, I've dealt with the main ones uh, here. Good. Welcome to Vessel. How are you doing? Um, Matt is also uh, tuning in there. Good. OK, and Albert tuning at the bottom. How are you doing? OK, guys, thanks Thanks so much for watching. So 30 day Excel analyst. Where are we? Well, we've done data management week now. Um, next week is a vacation week next week. OK, I've got to catch up with some other stuff. So we won't be having live sessions. So we will be back, guys. We will be back. Uh, week beginning. Let's get the date here. We will be back on Monday the 4th, it looks like, Monday the 4th of September. We'll be back and we'll be dealing then. I think we're going to do data analysis next. In the schedule, it says modeling. From what we've done, I think it's more logical to do data analysis next. So we'll be back, guys, Monday the 4th of September, 10 a.m. UK time. In the meantime, remember, all the sessions are there on replay. The playlist is in the video description below, so you can go back and catch up. All the resources, the download files and the slides all available for you too. We're trying to transform your analytical skill set in 30 days. Thanks so much for being with us, guys. I'll see you Monday, 4th of September, uh, 10 a.m. Take care.